Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, taking a look at the new Super Nintendo Entertainment System option in Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, you may recall I didn't really like the NES version, but one of the main reasons I didn't like it was the button layout doesn't match a real NES uh, on a Joy-Con. Whereas the Joy-Con button layout is exactly the same as the SNES button layout, so hopefully I'll like this a lot more. I haven't tried to run it yet, I don't know what games are in it, um, I don't really know what to expect. Uh, I think it's got some of the good ones, I hope. We'll see how we go. Ding! Okay, so we've got... This looks pretty similar to before. Uh, I guess I'll make it pixel perfect. Uh, one player. Okay, what have we got here? We got, uh, I don't know what Brawl Brothers is. We got Breath of Fire, F-Zero, uh, a bunch of Kirby games. I can't see Kirby Superstar, which is a shame, because that was also on the SNES, and it's really good. Uh, Pilot Wings, Star Fox, Mario Kart, World, Yoshi's Island, Metroid, Link to the Past, excellent. And that's it for now. I assume I'll add more, because this is only, like, one page worth. So far, um, let's, let's give, uh, Link to the Past a shot. Here we go. Well, that's working. It's Link to the Past. This is how you have to do it. This is the the legally mandated name for files in Zelda games. Help me. Please help me. I am a prisoner in the dungeon of the castle. My name is Zelda. The wizard, Arganim, has done something to the other missing girls. Now only I remain. Arganim has seized control of the castle and is now trying to open the Seven Wise Men's seal. I am in the dungeon of the castle. Please help me. Link, I'm going out for a while. I'll be back by morning. Don't leave the house. Alright, well, time to leave the house. Uh, let's get some hearts here. Uh, the main thing we want to do, though, is come over here, get the lantern. You got the lamp. Now you can light torches and see your way in darkness. So yeah, this is this is just linked to the past. It's pretty accurate. Um, looks just like the original, as far as I can remember. I think I mentioned this before. When I well, when I had a Super Nintendo, a real one, we were using like the RF to hook it up rather than com com like composite video. And we never got it right. Like, we didn't get any colour in our games. It was all sepia, which was really weird. Uh, I kind of thought that's how the games were supposed to be, because that's the only way I'd ever seen them. But, obviously, no, they are very colourful. Hey, hey, you're not, allowed, you're not allowed in the castle, son. Go home and get some sleep. Don't call me son. Gross. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, this is this is Link to the Past. Um, apparently you can rewind, okay. Oh, I see, you can just jump back. That's neat. So it, it makes automatic save states, like, every couple of seconds. Cool. I thought it'd be like a real-time rewind, like in Mednafen, but this is cool too. Help me, I'm in the dungeon of the castle. I know there is a hidden path from outside of the castle to the garden inside. It's kind of weird that there's no fast-forward button. Seems like the sort of thing you would want to have when you're emulating an old game like this. Since you don't get a run button for quite a while in this game. Ugh. Link, I didn't want you involved in this. I told you not to leave the house. Take my sword and shield and listen. You can focus power in the blade, hold the B button. Then release it using the secret technique handed down by our people. Link, you can do it. Save the princess. Zelda is your... Well, my uncle's dead. That sucks. Boop. 
Ooh, the boop. Yeah, this plays fine. It plays like The Legend of Zelda because it's using the same button layout and pretty much the same controls as Link to the Past. Feels fine. Plays good. Bring up the map if you want. There's the map it's using mode 7, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you know about SNES features a bit, you might know about mode 7. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, that's working fine. Let's um, let's check out some of the other games. So we can play Link to the Past. Unfortunately, that is the default text for Link to the Past. I do have a ROM hack that changes the pronouns to so that you don't get called son and boy and stuff, which I really appreciate when I play Link to the Past. And unfortunately, as far as I know, you can't use any ROM hacks on this. Um, that would just be too cool. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's try Yoshi's Island. I have never played the SNES version of Yoshi's Island. I got the GBA version as a kid, and I adored that, uh, but the original SNES version I'm, I've never played. So let's have a look at it now. I'm pretty familiar with the game, so I mostly know what to expect, but not totally. God, this game's pretty. This paradise is Yoshi's Island, where all the Yoshis live. There's an E in Yoshis? Really? They are all in an uproar over the baby that fell from the sky. Wait, the baby seems to know where he wants to go. The bond between the twins informs each of them where the other one is. The Yoshis decide to carry the baby to his destination via a relay system. Now begins a new adventure for the Yoshis and Baby Mario. Again, a bit of a fast forward would be useful here and there. Because that cutscene. If Baby Mario falls off Yoshi's back, the countdown timer will begin. When it reaches zero, Kamek's toadies will kidnap Baby Mario. The more stars you collect, the safer you are. The countdown time will slowly count back up to 10. Complete a stage by passing Baby Mario to the next Yoshi. Oh. Okay, um. The flutter jump in the GBA version has a Yoshi sound clip when you use it, like going But in this version, you use just the legs fluttering. Interesting. Eating, eating things also made a Yoshi noise in the GBA version. I guess they hadn't really worked out Yoshi's voice at this time. Interesting. Hovering jump. By holding B down, you can hover in the air for a short time. Make the extra effort. I thought it was called a flutter jump. Maybe they hadn't named it yet. Anyway, this control's fine. Um... This game I'm not really used to the SNES controls because, as I said, I played it on the GBA, uh, which obviously doesn't have SNES style controls, but it's working out okay. Yeah, all of the sounds Yoshi makes are different in this version. Like, you have, you know, you know how Yoshi's voice sounds with the huh and the huh and the huh and the yashi and all that stuff. I'm not hearing any of that, which is interesting. I guess that was added in the GBA version. Fascinating. Pew pew. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. And in the and when you jump, you get a little springing noise in this version as well, which is different. Say boing boing boing. Yeah, in the in the GBA version, you have you should go ha. What when he jumps instead, which, which... All the sounds are different, this is so weird. The music's the same, though. Special flower, like other five for a one-up. They add to your point total. They also add flowers to the gold ring roulette. Bop, 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 
Uh, I should have gotten that, but I didn't. Yeah, Yoshi's sounds are very different in this version of the game. Weird. Anyway, yeah, that's Yoshi's Island. Seems to work fine. Uh, let's go back to game selection, try something else for a little bit. Um, they seem to play fine. I haven't noticed any problems, except that you can't use ROM hacks to, you know, change the pronouns or play things like any of the many, many Super Mario World hacks out there. Because there are a lot of them. Uh, this I played uh, on the SNES originally, so I'm familiar with the SNES version of it. I like how this text has the word again twice in a row like that. Missing again, looks like Bowser was at it again. Pretty awkward. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm gonna start by going this way. Boom, ba -da -ba -doo. And this should play fine because the controls are in the right spots. Yeah, that feels fine to me. I'm not sure the X button does anything in this game. Doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe I've forgotten something. Like, it's interesting because this was a launch title and you'd think they'd want to use all the buttons to show off what they what they can do with all the buttons. They use the shoulder buttons, that's how you move the camera. Um, annoyingly, you have to use L and R, you can't use ZL or ZR, they don't do the same thing. Uh, even though they could, because you have to press both of them to actually suspend. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Blop, blop. Yeah, so this is Super Mario World. It's very playable. Um... <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, yeah, that works. Um... These all seem playable and good. Uh, I have much less of a problem with it because uh, they don't, you know, for force. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't force you to use a weird control scheme. This, these are the controls these games always had uh, because the Joy Cons have the same layout, so it's a lot more familiar to me. Uh, much more comfortable. Kirby's Dream Course. Let's have a look. Uh, new member. Um. Is this how it's supposed to work? I've never played this game. This is brand new to me. Uh. Alright. Okay, so Kirby's a ball. It looks at things. Is this like a pinball game? I don't know. I don't, I've never played it. Um. Oh, okay. Interesting. They didn't really explain it very well, I gotta say. Uh. 
Okay, so it's kind of like a golf game. Interesting. Yeah, it's basically a golf game with with Kirby as the as the golf ball. Weird. <laughs> Yeah, and then it makes a hole. Okay, 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 I get it. Oops. Kirby. Go in the hole. It's kind of weird to control. <laughs> okay, I think I kind of get it. I don't know. I I, it, I I didn't get it. It's weird. Weird game. <laughs> um, I'd probably like it if I like looked up the guide and figured out how to play it properly, the manual, that sort of thing. Uh, let's try Super Mario Kart. Yeah, this looks about right. This is how I remember the game being. I forget what button is using items. Is it still... No, that's hop. That one? No. There we go. It's A button, apparently. And you can have more than 10 coins in this game. Unlike in some later games I could mention. It's much harder to um, drift around the corners in this game than it is in later ones. They do that sort of thing a lot in modern Mario Kart. Also, there's five laps instead of three. I think that's the case on everywhere in this, in this version of the game. I'm not sure if that's some tracks or all of them. Yay! Fun fact, by the way, that black bar in the middle of the screen, that needs to be there. Uh, the processor is on the SNES is actually working really hard to do things during that time. So it has to draw a black bar there instead of something else, which is kind of hilarious. Um, yeah, I, I know, I won. I won. I know I'm, I know I'm good in video games. Um, yeah, that plays fine. Um, I can't really remember how this game used to play, but it seems to play fine with these Joy-Cons, so that's good. I'm trying to use the analog to get better steering, but obviously that won't work because this game was designed for the SNES, <laughs> which did not have any analog inputs. Is that a poison mushroom? Does this game have those? Maybe it was a regular mushroom and I should have touched it. Oh, you can spin out if you turn too hard. That doesn't happen much in the later games. You also can't slipstream like you can in the later ones.
Yeah, the steering is, is not good <laughs> compared to the later Mario Karts where you have proper analog control. <laughs> like a real steering wheel, almost. Playable. But yeah, the reason that it only takes up half the screen and then there's the map at the bottom is that they couldn't actually draw the 3D world in the top screen full screen enough. Like, the SNES wasn't powerful enough, so they had to do it this way with, with the split screen all the time. Which is a fun fact, I think. Which is why when you get the rear vision mirror thing, it's actually smaller than the top screen, rather than being full resolution. Anyway, yeah, I'm I'm okay at Mario Kart. It's perfectly playable. Uh, so my overall opinion here is this is a lot better than the NES one because the controls are better arranged. Um, there's also a lot less junk in here, like the, the special deluxe versions of games or whatever that just start you at certain places. Um, hang on, is that Puyo Puyo? <gasps> oh my gosh, it's in Japanese, it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know what any of these options mean, but I'm, I'm excited. I want to play for your fear. I'm, okay, I'm playing as all. Okay. Yes, it's for your fear. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Interesting that they didn't localize any of the text, and so I can't read any of it. Um, it's an interesting choice on their part. I don't know if there's like a setting I can change somehow that makes it readable. Um, seems like that'd be a good feature to have. <laughs> Yes, it's Brio Brio, and I'm playing into Skeleton for some reason. Oh my gosh. Heck yeah! I sure do. So yeah, um... I, I, I guess there's a Puyo Puyo game on here that, that wasn't ever localized? And they didn't... And they still didn't localize it when they put it in here? Seems like a weird choice, but whatever. The controls are pretty much the same as I remember. Puyo Puyo doesn't have a whole lot of special buttons. You don't have a hold button like in Tetris, so that's not something to worry about, for example. Seems to play pretty much fine. Um, in this game, the, the lack of analog doesn't really matter because you want to move things to the grid anyway. I pretty much always use the D-pad when I'm playing more modern Puyo Puyo games. I like how Tetris is a bit sad.
Ah. Heck. Well, I only have three letters. I don't think I know how long a name usually is. There we go. <laughs> I want to see if there's maybe a way I can change the language. I don't know how I would tell if I'm looking at the right spot to change the language though, because these are all in Japanese and I can't read them. Oh, okay, this this looks good. Uh, game mode. Puyo 2? No, I can't see anything for languages here. I guess it, that's just how it is. Weird. <laughs> I mean, it's freaking cool to have more Puyo Puyo. Obviously, I adore that game, but it's a bit strange that it's... Okay, the Super Famicom version of the head-to-head -head puzzle game Puyo Puyo 2, so the game has never been translated into English. So they're explaining it here so that you know how to play. I see. Cool. <laughs> um, anyway, I guess that's about all I want to say. Like, I, I like the look of this. Um... It's interesting that they've put in a Super Famicom title they haven't localized here. Um, of course, it's a very good one. It's Puyo Puyo, which is fantastic. So that makes sense. Um, I am disappointed that you can't use ROM hacks to play things like Super Mario Thing, or um, Kaizo Mario World, or Link to the Past with better pronouns, or, you know, all that sort of stuff. You can't do that because you can't hack ROMs on the, on here, you can only use the games they've given you. Which was the same thing problem with the NES version, but, you know, it bothers me more here because SMU ROM hacking is such an enormous field, and you only have the original game here, obviously. Which is very sad. Um, but yeah, overall this is, I think, a lot better. Uh, mostly because the controller fits a lot better than it did with the NES games, so... I'm glad that that is what they've decided to do and put these across as well. Um, I'll probably end up playing through Link to the Past this way, although I'm annoyed about the pronouns and stuff. Uh, I don't know if I'll record that or if I'll just do it. But yeah, I'm going to play Link to the Past on here because I adore that game. It's fantastic. Possibly go through Yoshi's Island as well because it's also pretty good. I mean, it's also fantastic, not just pretty good. Uh, I don't know if I'll play this Puyo Puyo. Um, PPT is visually better, and has the same gameplay as far as I know, so I may as well just play that. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. 